So, uh, dear students, uh, in the last session, we stopped with uh, the calculation of uh, P3 and we calculated it as 2.52 bar. Now, in the in our uh, question, it was mentioned like this. Let us come back to our question. The isentropic efficiency of the compressor and expander. Okay. Now, let us focus on compressor. The isentropic efficiency of a compressor is 0.8. So, what does that mean? So, the isentropic efficiency of a compressor means it is not working in isentropic process, but it is working in some other process. So, that is what, uh, so that is uh, what we have, uh, that is what, uh, that is why we uh, have drawn, that is why we have drawn, instead of 2, two to 3 as isentropic process, we considered an actual process, that is 2 to 3 dash by drawing a dotted line. So, the, this dotted line means it is an actual process. Uh, represented uh, by 2 to 3 dash. Now, isentropic efficiency uh, of uh, uh, isentropic efficiency of uh, this uh, compressor means actually uh, if the uh, compressor was working isentropically or ideally the temperature rise would have been from T2 to T3. Okay. Actually, uh, the, by means of the uh, by, by means of an ideal compression, the temperature would have increased from T2 to T3. But what is happening here? The compressor is not working uh, isentropically or ideally. So what does that mean? If the the actual uh, temperature rise uh, is happening from uh, T2 to 3, T3 dash. So uh, with that idea, let us uh, try to represent. Uh, the isentropic efficiency of uh, our compressor so so uh, coming back and uh, writing the isentropic efficiency of the compressor it is given as point 8 this point 8 will be equal to t3 minus t2 divided by t3 dash minus t2 okay so the actual temperature rise happening is from t2 to t3 dash but uh, the I, if, if the compressor was working in ideal case, the actual the ideal temperature rise would have been T2 to T3. Okay. So and also how to uh, uh, take this uh, uh, in uh, numerator and denominator? Why this T3 minus T2 is coming in the numerator and why this T3 dash minus T2 is coming in the denominator? Okay. So actually this ratio is given as point eight which means it is less than 1. Also, mathematically we know if a ratio is less than 1, the numerator will be lesser than the denominator. So again, let us come back to our uh, TS diagram. So here you can see the actual temperature rise T2 to T3 dash is higher than the ideal temperature rise T2 to T3. So what does that mean? If the isentropic equation is 0.8 means uh, this uh, T3 minus T2 will be coming in the numerator divided by the denominator that is T3 dash minus T2. Okay. And that is given us uh, 0.8. Okay. So, uh, now uh, this relation is given. Uh, so, we already, uh, so, we, uh, now let us uh, try to uh, substitute the known, uh, the known values here. Okay. So, T2 we already found out uh, from uh, the previous the previous discussions okay now uh, uh, now let us try to uh, approach this uh, uh, process uh, approach this uh, question in step by step okay 2 to 3 the process 2 to 3 the process 2 to 3 uh, the po the process 2 to 3 uh, was assumed as isentropic and only the process 2 to 3 dash was uh, the uh, actual process okay so we can safely uh, apply the isentropic relation our isentropic, isentropic law to 2 to 3 so by applying the isentropic law t3 by t2 will be equal to p3 by p2 raised to gamma minus 1 by gamma so by cross multiplying with t t2 we can easily calculate t3 because p3 uh, we already know p3 by p2 it is already given in the uh, question that is it is 4.5 okay so p3 by p2 is 4.5 and the gamma value is known t2 we have already found out 
so by cross multiplying this we can easily find out t3 okay t3 we found out as 462.5 kelvin now using this uh, calculated value of t3 you please substitute it here okay so now the only unknown term is t3 dash so in the isentropic efficiency term 0.8 equals the all other terms are known here only the, the the only unknown value here is t3 dash by cross multiplying we can easily find out t3 dash and that is nothing but coming around 5, 502.875 kelvin okay so we have reached uh, our so we have calculated the temperature and pressure of all the points up to uh, 3 and 3 dash okay so we calculated the temperature and pressure at 1 at 2 then 3 and 3 dash also now let us try to find out the temperature and pressure at 4 so what is this uh, 3 to 4 process or 3 dash to 4 process it is the heat exchanger or the cooler process so now let us uh, uh, read the question now let uh, any, anything men mentioned about this uh, heat exchanger or the uh, cooler process so yes it is given heat exchanger effectiveness heat exchanger effectiveness is given as 0.95 so what does this what is the meaning of this heat exchanger effectiveness or the effectiveness of a heat exchanger actually for what uh, for what purpose actually we are uh, implementing a heat exchanger here if you remember correct correctly the diagram uh, of our simple aircraft refrigeration system what is the purpose of uh, implementing a heat exchanger that is uh, anyway after this ramming process the temperature of the ambient air is increasing from uh, the temperature and pressure is uh, increasing from uh, 1 to 2 again from 2 to 3 another compressor is uh, uh, compressing our working fluid that is air so again increasing the temperature from 2 to 3 dash 2 to 3 dash that is the actual case okay uh, then uh, actually the uh, main purpose of implementing or fitting a heat exchanger immediately after this compressor process is compressor process is to bring down this temperature uh, the high temperature at t3 dash back to t2 that is uh, uh, mainly by working of the by running our main compressor the temperature uh, of our uh, air which was at t2 it got increased up to 3 dash or t3 dash okay but uh, in order to bring that uh, uh, temperature t3 dash back to t2 actually we implemented the heat exchanger uh, or the cooler but we know no uh, uh, no uh, practical heat exchanger will have 100 uh, percent effectiveness okay so here also uh, the after implementing the heat exchanger uh, heat, heat exchanger also you can see if you closely observe if you closely observe our uh, ts diagram uh, actually we implemented our uh, heat exchanger to bring down this t3 dash back to t2 but uh, it the after the heat exchanger process or the cooler the cooler is able the uh, heat exchanger is able only to bring down the temperature from t3 dash only up to t4 if you observe closely we know this t4 is still at a higher temperature than t2 okay so what does that mean the effectiveness or the efficiency of the heat exchanger was less than one so it was able to reduce the temperature of the air uh, only up to t4 while it was expected that it will be reduced to t2 okay so it is this idea that is implemented it is this idea that is implemented in our effectiveness of heat exchanger okay so effectiveness of heat exchanger uh, we can uh, uh, express it like this effectiveness of heat exchanger will be the actual temperature drop divided by the expected temperature drop the actual temperature drop is uh, happening only from t3 dash to t4 while the expected temperature drop was from t3 dash to t2 okay and that is given as 0.95 in our question okay so it is using this idea let us move on so 0.95 will be equal to 
502.87 that is uh, the calculated value of t3 dash uh, and t2 also we know so the only unknown term here is t4 by cross multiplying we can easily calculate the value of t4 and that is coming around 301 311.08 kelvin okay now t4 is known so now we reached now we now we reach the point 4 now we have calculated uh, the point uh, 4 over here uh, 4 over here then uh, what about the pressure at point 4 it is same at uh, it is same as p3 or p3 dash why because 3 to 4 it is a constant pressure process uh, no pressure loss is happening inside the cooler or the heat exchanger so 3 to 4 or 3 dash to 4 it is a constant pressure process so p4 will be equal to p3 or p3 dash okay and t4 also uh, temperature uh, at 4 also now we have found out now let us uh, try to find out the temperature and the pressure at 5 and 5 dash okay so what was this 4 to 5 or this 4 to 5 dash uh, actually uh, immediately after the point 4 that is at the exit of uh, the heat exchanger the air is moving towards the expander okay so again uh, now let us uh, uh, try to read the question now let us uh, try to read the question the isentropic efficiency of the compressor and the expander are 0.8 each, 8 each so we already discussed about this isentropic efficiency of the compressor so the same case applies here also for the expander so isentropic efficiency of the expander is given means the expander is not working purely in isentropy process but it will be working on a uh, irreversible adiabatic process so this line so uh, this line 4 to 5 is representing the ideal expander expander working or isentropic working of the uh, expander but in the question itself they are say, uh, telling that the compressor is not working uh, in purely isentropic process but uh, in some other actual process okay some other actual process means it can be some ideal uh, sorry it can be some adiabatic process but with some irreversibilities so 4 to 5 dash is represented as irreversible adiabatic expansion process okay so by uh, applying so by applying isentropic law to 4 to 5 4 to 5 was uh, assumed as the isentropic uh, expansion process so p5 by p4 will be equal to t5 by t4 raised to gamma by gamma minus 1 okay so by uh, cross multiplying with the t4 we can easily calculate this uh, t5 okay then uh, what was this p5 and p4 p5 uh, was 1.06 uh, bar but what is this 1.06 bar the cabin pressure okay so uh, why we are taking cabin pressure at uh, uh, p5 again let us come back so here you can see for the point 5 5 dash and 6 all are coming along the same pressure line okay so immediately after this uh, expander or the uh, cooling turbine actually uh, if you remember our analysis correctly 4 to 5 uh, process is the cooling turbine process immediately after this cooling turbine process the air is moving towards the cabin so there is no pressure loss ha happening in between that is uh, at the exit of, uh, after after exiting from the cooling turbine the air is moving towards the cabin uh, that process is uh, represented by this line 5 5 dash to 6 so p5 pressure at 5 and 5 dash and 6 are all the pressure of uh, the cabin so uh, so coming back so by coming back p5 is 1.06 p4 is 2.52 by cross multiplying that we can easily calculate it we can easily calculate t5 or temperature at uh, 5 okay now let us uh, try to find out the other temperatures and pressure so now let us uh, discuss later